This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our viewers and listeners across the country and around the world. The Pentagon has reportedly drawn up a plan to send as many as 120,000 troops to the Middle East if President Trump decides to take military action against Iran. The New York Times reports the Pentagon presented the proposal on Thursday after National Security Advisor John Bolton requested a revision to an earlier plan. Bolton has long advocated for attacking Iran. According to the Pentagon, far more than 120,000 troops would be needed if a ground invasion was ordered. This comes as tension continues to escalate between the United States and Iran. The United States recently deployed the Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group and a bomber task force to the region, claiming there was a credible threat by Iranian regime forces. Meanwhile, Iran has announced it will stop complying with parts of the landmark 2015 nuclear deal and resume high-level enrichment of uranium within 60 days if other signatories of the deal do not take action to shield Iran's oil and banking sectors from U.S. sanctions. The U.S. has attempted to cut Iran off from the global economy, even though Iran has remained in compliance with the nuclear deal. In another development from the region, four oil tankers, including two Saudi tankers, were damaged off the coast of the United Arab Emirates on Sunday. Saudi Arabia described it as a sabotage attack. Unnamed U.S. officials have been quoted in the media blaming Iran, but no evidence has been presented. Iran has described the incident as a conspiracy orchestrated by ill-wishers. On Monday, President Trump was asked about what happened. Mr. President, are you concerned about the attacks on oil tankers in the Middle East? Uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a bad problem for Iran if something happens, I can tell you that. They're not going to be happy. They are not going to be happy people. Okay? You can figure it out yourself. They, they know what I mean by it. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia is claiming drones carried out attacks on two Saudi oil pumping stations earlier today. A Houthi-run TV station in Yemen had earlier reportedly said the Houthis had carried out an attack inside Saudi Arabia. On Monday, the European Union urged the Trump administration to show maximum restraint following a meeting between U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and European Union diplomats in Brussels. Today, Pompeo is meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin to discuss Iran and other issues. Meanwhile, Iran's foreign minister, Javad Zarif, is in India today. Up until recently, India was the second largest importer of Iran's oil behind China, but India cut off sales after the Trump administration withdrew waivers allowing them to import Iranian oil. We're joined now by a former Iranian ambassador, Sayed Hussein Musavian. He is a Middle East security and nuclear policy specialist at Princeton University's Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. From 2003 to 2005, he served as spokesperson for Iran in its nuclear negotiations with the European Union. He's the author of The Iranian Nuclear Crisis, a memoir, and most recently, Iran and the United States, an insider's view on the failed <clears throat> past and the road to peace. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Ambassador Sayed Hussein Masavian. It's great to have you with us. Very serious times, as The New York Times reports, that the U.S. is preparing to send 120,000 troops to the region, uh, to the area around Iran, uh, is reportedly drawing up plans. Can you talk about the significance of this? Yes, good morning. Actually, I expected such a situation after Ambassador John Bolton was nominated as National Security Advisor. Uh, I have written many op-eds articles during last year that it's going to happen. Because even this morning, if you look at USA Today, two uh, high-ranking American Congress members, Senator Murphy and Representative Himes, they have an op-ed saying that John Bolton and Pompeo are leading the U.S. into a war with Iran. At some days before, Another two very high-ranking Congress members, Senator Durbin, they had the same op-ed saying that John Bolton is uh, taking the U.S. to a war with Iran. Therefore, it is clear John Bolton wrote an op-ed at New York Times calling for attacking Iran, bombing Iran as the only option, as he said. 
uh, he was uh, allied with uh, the terrorist group of uh, Iranian terrorist group MEK. He gave lecture, he invited them to rule Iran, he called for regime change. Therefore, everyone knows what is the strategy and the mindset and the plan of Ambassador John Bolton. This is not a confidential issue. Second, the fact is the, the, the Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu for many years have been pushing the U.S. to attack Iran. He has huge influence at the White House. You remember when uh, President Trump withdrew from Iranian nuclear deal, some days later, uh, Bibi Netanyahu said, I asked him to leave the JCPOA, the Iranian nuclear deal. It was me who made him to depart from the deal. After President Trump designated Iranian army as a terrorist group, again, Bibi Netanyahu publicly said, it was me who asked uh, uh, President Trump to designate Iranian army as a terrorist group. Therefore, this is very obvious, well known. The third issue is the fact uh, that uh, Ben Salman and uh, Ben Zaid, uh, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and Emirate, they have been pushing the U.S. for many years to attack Iran. You remember uh, Secretary of State John Kerry three times revealed that uh, in any meeting, he said, we have, uh, we had with Saudis, Israelis, Emiratis, they were asking only to attack Iran, attack Iran, attack Iran. Therefore, the four Bs team, John Bolton, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, Ben Salman, and uh, Ben Zayed, now they have excellent position at White House to push the U.S., the dream they have had for years and years and years, to drag the U.S. into a war with Iran. Uh, that's why I would say uh, what the American Congress members have frequently warned, Iranians have warned, Europeans they have warned, is happening, unfortunately. That would be extremely dangerous for the U.S., for the region, for Iran, for uh, international community. Because look at the situation in the Middle East today. What happened after the U.S. attacked Iraq? Who were uh, encouraging the U.S. to attack Iran? Iraq, it was John Bolton, it was Bibi Netanyahu, who came to U.S. Congress member and publicly in front of hundreds of members of the Congress said we have evidence that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and supporting al Qaeda, And they pushed President Bush to attack Iraq. And after that, everyone understood there was neither weapons of mass destruction nor evidence of any support of Saddam Hussein of al Qaeda. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, everyone understands Iraq's scenario is on the table exactly. Although, I mean, I should say personally, I believe President Trump really does not want war. He is, even he is not after regime change in Iran, but they are taking him exactly, gradually inching him to a war with Iran. And look at the situation, I mean, the, the consequences of uh, U.S. attack on Afghanistan. After 17 years, uh, over 50 percent of Afghanistan now is in the hand of Taliban, and the U.S. is crying to negotiate with Taliban for a face saving after thousands of Americans and of tens of thousands of, uh, of Afghanis, they have been killed. Five, well, six thousand of Americans, they were killed in Iraq. Well, Ambassador— uh, Look at the Yemen situation. Uh, Ambassador yes. Musafian, in, in the— uh Given the scenario you've laid out of the context of uh, everything that's been ha that's happened in the past, how do you see this uh, latest news of these four commercial ships that were sabotaged and Iran claiming that they believe a third country is uh, is behind these attacks? Uh, how do you see this as the buildup of a pretext to attacking exactly. Iran? Exactly. This is exactly what I have said for many months. 
how they would drag President Trump to a war, this would be such an incidence in the region. It is not new, I have said for many months, in many articles and interviews, uh, malicious uh, attempts by conspirators, conspiracy attempts, in order to blame, either to attack uh, the U.S. facilities in the region, or to kill some American soldiers in the region, or to attack uh, American allies uh, uh, facilities in the region. You just read last week uh, some articles by Israeli uh, papers saying that we have information that Iran is going to attack uh, oil infrastructure of American allies in the region. This is the scenario. This is the conspiracy uh, plan which they want to leave no option for President Trump uh, unless to attack Iran. We want to turn to President Trump last Thursday, who was speaking at an impromptu news conference. He said Iran's leadership should sit down and talk with him about giving up Tehran's nuclear program. Trump declined to answer a reporter's question about why he deployed the USS Abraham Lincoln carrier group to Iran over what was described as unspecified threats. What did Iran do to prompt you to send an aircraft carrier to the, the region? Well, they were threatening, and we have information. We have information that uh, you don't want to know about. They were very threatening, and uh, we just want to have. Uh, we have to have great security for this country and for a lot of other places. Is there a risk of military confrontation, sir? I guess you could say that always, right? Isn't it? I mean, you know, always. I don't want to say no, but. Hopefully, that won't happen. Uh, we have one of the most powerful ships in the world that's loaded up, and we don't want to have to do anything. What I'd like to see with Iran, I'd like to see them call me. We just don't want them to have nuclear weapons. Not too much to ask. And we would help put them back into great shape. I'd like to see them call me. President Trump said. We are still with Princeton University professor Ambassador Sayed Hussein Mosavian, Middle East security and nuclear policy specialist at Princeton University's Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. Can you respond to what Trump said? And also, let's talk about the stranglehold of the sanctions that are continue that the U.S. is continuing to tighten against Iran. The effects that's having on the ground, Ambassador. Yes, I think uh, President Trump made a big mistake to depart from the nuclear deal. Practically, it was President Trump who left the negotiation table, because Iran and the big powers, the P5 plus one, they were negotiating at the level of foreign ministers and deputy ministers for years. And during even President uh, Obama, you remember John Kerry and Iranian Foreign Minister Jawad Zarif, if not every day, they were weekly in touch, negotiating, meeting, emailing. When President Trump left the deal, practically he left the negotiation uh, table. Therefore, he should be blamed for leaving the negotiation, not the Iranian side. And he is welcomed back again to the forum of P5 plus one to return to the nuclear deal, to open dialogue and negotiation with Iran in, uh, with the other world powers if there is any other issue beyond the nuclear to negotiate. This is number one. Number two, there is well known by uh, many nuclear scientists worldwide, even International Atomic Energy Agency, saying that the Iranian nuclear deal was and is the most comprehensive agreement during the history of non-proliferation. And Iran has accepted commitment for transparency measures and limitations on the nuclear program, which no other member of NPT, Non-Proliferation Treaty, has ever accepted. Therefore, Iran has accepted the maximum level of transparency based on the reports of the IAEA and, and United Nations. Third, the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, which is the sole agency to, to uh, judge about the nuclear program of the members, for two years, in 14 reports, has confirmed Iran has fully complied with the nuclear deal. Therefore, there has been zero failure 
on the Iranian side. The deal was approved by United Nations Security Council, United Nations Security Council Resolution 2231. The U.S. violated. It was the U.S. who violated the deal, departed, and now, and worse, which is uh, really an unprecedented phenomenon during the history of international relations and United Nations is the fact that the, the United States is punishing the other member of United Nations for complying with the resolution 2231 to supporting implementing the Iran nuclear deal. We have never had a U.N. Uh, Security Council member to punish the other <coughs> members just because they are implementing the deal. You know, therefore, the U.S. is discrediting uh, the international, the highest level of international body on security and political, which is the United Nations Security Council, well, Ambassador because from now on— uh, yes, Ambassador. Uh, on that point specifically, the uh, that the Trump, uh, President Trump, did not only pull out. He, as you say, he is now trying to punish anyone who stays in the deal. Uh, the mm -hmm. Iran has waited patiently for a year for the other signatories uh, to demonstrate that they're going to continue implementing it. So, uh, how do you place the, the the announcement that they may begin enrichment again in the context of this year-long wait to see what the Europeans and the other signatories would do? about the plan. Exactly. See, it is not for it is actually for two years. From the day one, President Trump has started to impose new sanctions. Based on JCPOA, the U.S. and EU, they are committed not only uh, to reintroduce the nuclear-related sanctions, but not to reimpose new sanctions. Therefore, the U.S. has violated, and he is pu uh, punishing the other members for implementing the deal. Iran has been patient for two years implementing the deal with zero uh, benefit. Now, Iran has decided uh, on two measures, which is not the, uh, a break of nuclear deal, uh, because the U.S. latest sanctions uh, uh, prevented uh, the export of excessive amount of enriched uranium. Iran, based on the nuclear deal, Iran has accepted always to keep 300 kilogram and export uh, the excessive amount to Russia uh, of enriched uranium and 130 tons of heavy water and to export the excessive amount to Oman. Now, it is the U.S. has put sanctions on Iran not to export. Uh, the heavy water, the excessive amounts to Oman, and not to export the excessive amount of enrichment to Russia. Therefore, Iran has no other option. Iran cannot practically uh, export. Therefore, Iran would be forced to have excessive amount. Therefore, it, it is not a, a violation uh, by the Iranian side. Iran has been forced by the U.S. not to export. However, Iran has warned the other P5 plus members, P5 plus one members, that I have been waiting for two years for you. You have done zero. If you cannot implement the deal, I'm not going to implement the deal forever unilaterally. This is an international agreement. This is multilateral agreement. If the U.S. cannot comply, you should comply. If none of you are going to comply, I'm going to gradually deport, uh, depart from the deal. That's why now Europe, Russia, China, India, every country is blaming the U.S., not Iran. Uh, a U.N. official recently criticized the U.S. for imposing these unilateral sanctions on Iran, on Cuba and Venezuela that could lead to mass starvation, he said. U.N. Special Rapporteur Idris Jazeri said, quote, "...real concerns and serious political differences between governments must never be resolved by precipitating economic and humanitarian disasters, making ordinary people pawns and hostages thereof." Um, 
As we wrap up, the reality on the ground for the Iranian people right now, and what this could mean uh, also for the government, um, when the people are suffering as much as, um, as has been described. You are completely right. 80 millions of Iranians are suffering from U.S. sanctions. And practically, the strategy of John Bolton is uh, a war a sanction war, economic war on Iranian nations in order to push them to uh, bring a regime change within, inside Iran, within Iran. Therefore, practically, they are punishing the Iranian nation. This is really a big humanitarian disaster, because even Iranians, they cannot import medicine, they cannot import food. and. Uh, when uh, Foreign Minister Zarif was here some weeks ago, he just wanted to test uh, the, the humanitarian humor of the U.S. side. He proposed for exchange of prisoners, regardless of whether the prisoners in the uh, Iranian prisoners in the U.S. are guilty or not, or the U.S. prisoners in Iran, they are guilty or not. He proposed exchange of prisoners as a humanitarian gesture. And immediately White House uh, declined. While we had such a humanitarian exchange during President Obama, but President Trump declined. Therefore, we understand now there is zero hum humanitarian uh, goodwill from the U.S. side, and the policy is really economic war punishing the Iranian nation. We want to thank you so much for being with us, Ambassador. Ambassador Sayed Hussein Masavian is a Middle East security and nuclear policy specialist at Princeton University's Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs. He served as spokesperson for Iran in its nuclear negotiations with the European Union, author of The Iranian Nuclear Crisis, a memoir, and most recently, Iran and the United States, an insider's view on the failed past and the road to peace. Speaking to us from Princeton University, this is Democracy Now! When we come back, the award-winning playwright Eve Ensler, she has a new book out. It's called The Apology. Stay with us.